Yo, what's going on? Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the um the alpha mini. I don't know why I like it is the craziest thing. It's like I read the title of the video, I start recording, and then I just stay forgetting <laughs> what it is I'm showing y'all. But anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the output menu. In all honesty, I plan to combine this with the print debugging video, but I honestly forgot. Like I literally forgot <laughs> to talk about the output menu. I was just gonna make it one video, but I forgot, so I was like, all right, I guess I'd have to make it two videos. But this video will be uh, not sure. But yeah, because I noticed in the comments and stuff, um, one of the first things I ask people whenever they tell me like there's an error, it doesn't work. I one of the first things I usually ask, or at least the second, is is there an error in the output? And then I get a lot of responses. First of all, people don't even know what I'm talking about. They don't even know what the output is, right? Okay, so first, this is the output. This is what it looks like to access the output. You would be in Studio. You would go up here. You know, we see Home, Model, Avatar, Test, View, and Plugins. You would scroll over to View. And then I know there's a lot of icons, so it's kind of hard to tell. The output is the second icon right here, right? You can just hover over until you just see the name output, right? This is extremely useful, especially with debugging and stuff. In all honesty, I wouldn't even understand why you would be trying to script it and you're not using this in all honesty, right? Because because in the uh, output, this shows you like when you print and stuff, all of that stuff goes to the output. If there are any errors, um, if assets can't load, uh, if there aren't permissions to use certain stuff, uh, etc., etc., it all shows in the output. The output is just kind of like a, it's kind of like a notification service in a way. It's like a, it's like a notification service of like what is happening in your game. I guess you guys could say, right? So, um, it kind of splits it like with server and client or local. I guess you guys could say. So, say if I had a server script and then I have a local script, right? And they both are doing print hello world, right? Now, if I click play, it's gonna it's gonna uh, both print, but it's gonna look differently. You see first how the server one went first, then like about a second, maybe second and a half, the client went after, because obviously uh, the server scripts load obviously first, the foremost before the client scripts load. That's first. But second, you guys see how it's the, how it's uh, you can differentiate between the two. One says server, which means whatever's happening on the server side of of things well the client which is uh, referring to the player right hence scripts or server script and then client or local script right it tells you the difference green uh the little green bar means it's a server script the blue bar means it's a client script and then it tells you i i don't even know what time this is maybe if i maybe if i changed like my time zone here maybe it would convert to like a est or whatever i don't even know but anyway you know, could also use that for time and then as you guys can see it'll let you know whenever it auto saves for you and and here's how you also check when you publish if you publish you want to wait for uh you see the purple message which says or maybe you could change the colors i don't know but wait till you see the message publish new changes in nope in uh your game's name to roblox that's how you know right so that's what makes the output pretty simple i mean pretty useful and stuff now in terms of errors uh so say if i deleted this uh Oh, sorry. If I deleted that uh, parenthesis, right now, obviously this is an error, as you see by the red line, right? Now, if I click play, you guys are gonna see it a second right there. You get errors will be red, right? And then it'll tell you what's it called. It'll tell you the name of the script, and then you can left click and it'll take you to where it is, to where the error is, and stuff like that. Now, sometimes when you see an error in the output, and then you press stop, and then, uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what all that is. That's like those are robots errors, but anyway. Now sometimes, uh, see, it'll work this time, but sometimes when like you press stop, you try to go to an error, it won't, it, it won't let you go back to it. So just make sure you read exactly where the error is coming from, so you just know, just in case it doesn't let, it doesn't automatically take it to you, take you to the error and stuff like that, right? Now to clear, to clear the output, you simply just press the little boom icon, and then you can filter the output, right? Wait, where's not right here? No, not right here. Oh yeah, right here. You can filter by errors, warnings, because there's a difference between errors and warnings. Warnings is usually, uh, it's usually stuff like if you're making too many data store requests, or if you manually yourself like having a script where it on where like it has like a thing where it triggers warnings and stuff. Errors are that's all Roblox generated stuff. Like those are all like you type something wrong, you mistyped, or that can't be done, that doesn't exist. You guys get what I'm saying. Then you have regular information and system and stuff like. You know, like if you're printing and all that stuff, and yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much uh, how to how to use the Apple Menu. And of course, if you don't when, if you don't need anymore, you just press the X and you can get rid of it just like that. But yeah, Apple Menu is extremely useful. So when I ask y'all, 
uh, any errors in the output, please, please check the output because 9 out of 10, the output will show you what is wrong. But there are plenty of times though when the output won't show you an error. So you may have to go uh, use print debugging like I showed in the last video. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, leave a like and subscribe. Appreciate y'all for watching, and I'll see you guys.